When people find out you're a developer, you can get a lot of questions. And when it comes to family and friends, you can expect some pretty crazy ones. Usually starts with, oh, hey, you know how to code? I've got an idea. We need to talk. So today I'm going to go over some of the craziest questions that I get on a regular basis. And then I'm going to give you some advice on how you can answer them when your little brother or cousin or best friend comes at you with something completely insane. No, you're not going to stick that in your mouth, are you? Oh, yeah. oh. But before we get started, I want to ask you a quick question, which was, uh, did you already hit that thumbs up button? Ah, who am I kidding? Of course you hit it. Why wouldn't you, right? It really helps. I appreciate it. Now let's talk about Uber for. Now, if you're wondering what's Uber for, oh, you're about to find out. This is the question that I get all of the time. It's the one that often comes from someone like my sister and usually starts off something like this. Hey, Jason, I have this idea. Okay, listen up. So yesterday I went on a hot air balloon ride and it was really expensive and lots of fun. I bet they made a lot of money. So here's the idea, but you have to keep it super secret and can't tell anybody. Uber for hot air balloons. Can you make that? Now, of course, some ideas are great. The first Uber actually kind of made sense. People probably thought it was crazy, but it was ride sharing and it was a service where people would actually use it and you'd have a mass market. Things like hot air balloons or maid services or the dozens and dozens of other Uber for ideas that I've been presented usually don't have that market appeal. And the thought is just like, hey, if we slap an app onto this, will we suddenly make you know this one little small business into a giant mega business? And usually the answer to that is just gonna be no. You've gotta remind people that Uber isn't just an app. There's an app, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on on servers, and there's a giant company there too. There's a whole ton of drivers, people out there, training drivers, legal teams out there, fighting to make sure that they can do that and paying everybody. There's a lot to a company, a lot more than just creating an app. Sometimes people think that, hey, Uber is just this app. One guy can go make an app and then make their own Uber. There's a lot more to making a company than just making a simple app. And that's usually the point that I'll try to push to them. Tell them, hey, why don't you go make the company, set everything else up, and then let's talk about the app. And that's pretty much where it always ends because really they don't have an interest in making a company. They just thought, hey, this is a neat idea. Can I get rich off of sharing this idea really quick? And the answer to that is always going to be no. Pretty much nobody gets rich off of an idea unless you can patent it or you know, get some legal hold on it. You're not really going to make any money and nobody wants to go build your idea. Everybody's got ideas of their own, so it's not going to work. The get rich quick questions that you get won't always be as ethical as can we make an Uber either. The ones that I started out with, in fact, question number two, the one that I got in high school or maybe even junior high, can you hack my whatever? Hey, can you hack my grades? You can't do that. Can you make it so that my school report card doesn't get sent to my house or maybe just change my grades or fix the fact that I skipped a week of school in the school computer system? Or, hey, can we hack into the bank and transfer a bunch of money into my account? Or one of my favorites was, what if we just hack the lotto, right? Like we could maybe like use the fact that we have fast communications and buy tickets after the lotto tickets sell or after the numbers go out, maybe hack into their system and control what the numbers are going to be. All kinds of fun and crazy ideas that you're going to get to say no to. Obviously, you've got to say no to all of these because they're all going to be illegal probably impossible and definitely not worth the risk. There's plenty of stuff that you can do as a programmer where you can make a ton of money and be really profitable and, and happy and not a criminal as well. So expect these questions. Um, just expect to say, hey, I don't know how to do that. It'd be kind of neat, but I'm not going to figure it out right now. I got other things to do. Maybe you can go figure it out. Whenever your criminal friends recommend something, just say, hey, go look it up. It's out there on the internet. I don't really understand it and then move on to the next thing. Now, sometimes it's not all criminal stuff. Sometimes people just want to hack a game, right? They'll go, hey, can you hack this game for me as well? And in that case, you might actually be able to. And if it's a single player game and you're interested in it, I would say, hey, give it a try. Maybe go in there and see if you can figure out how to hack that single player game. When it comes to hacking multiplayer stuff, I would generally recommend against it. It's bad for the community. It's bad for... um just about everybody and it's a lot more work and probably not worth the payoff but hacking a single player game can be a lot of fun and it's really an educational experience that's the one hack that i would say yes to yes i can maybe hack your single player game and do a little bit of stuff maybe 
peek around in the memory, make some changes and see what I can do with it and have fun. But that's about it. Everything else gets a big fat no on the hacking. Speaking of games, we need to dive into wow butt. And that usually goes a bit like this. Might sound a bit weird, but it's a real thing. A friend will call me up and they'll say, hey, I've got this great game idea. I'll tell you all about it, but it's got to stay secret. Sometimes they'll even want you to sign an NDA. Great secret idea, right? And then from there, they'll usually start telling me about their favorite game, whatever it is. I'll use WoW as an example because that's the most common one. They'll start to tell me all of the things wrong with the game, the things that have changed over the life of the game that have ruined it and made it so a game that used to be really cool isn't that cool anymore. And they'll tell me about the one little thing that they could maybe change that would make it a big giant hit again. It's just like WoW, but this one thing's going to be a little bit different, or I'm going to add in this one feature. And of course, what? <laughs> like, of course you can't just build out a WoW game with one change or some other entire game with one change and think that that's going to be a big successful hit. Your one little pet peeve in a game is not that big of a deal, and it probably doesn't matter to most people. It might matter to you and your close friends that bitch and complain about it all the time, but in general, the developers know what most of their players want or what the majority of their players want, and they push towards that. Of course, sometimes they get it completely wrong and mess up. I'll give you that. But the idea that you're just going to rebuild an entire game, change one little thing, and suddenly it's going to be a better game, or that that's even a feasible, realistic idea, is just kind of out there. But I mean, that's what happens when you're not a developer and you're asking developers questions. You get this idea that you could just take WoW, grab it, you know, I bought it, so let's just take it and make a little change to it and have it be our own WoW. Now they think of it like any other physical item sometimes. So you've got to just kind of explain to people, hey, we could make a WoW game if you've got a couple, maybe 100 million or maybe even 10 million, we can make a scaled back version. But we certainly can't make a uh, version that's just like it with one change for your budget or anybody we know's budget. So it's not really an option. And then they'll go into, you know, it might not be a wow one. It might be a you know mobile game, but one little change thinking that, hey, that's going to fix it. And a lot of the time there, I'll say, hey, did you actually go look to see if that exists? Because for most of the mobile games that people complain about and that they have an issue with, that they wish one thing was a little bit different. There are probably 50 to 1,000 other little clones out there that do it slightly differently. And one of those, probably many of them, do it the way that you want. You just don't have the time or energy to go out and search for them. And they don't have the marketing budget to promote their game. And you also don't have the marketing budget to promote the version that you copy that does that little changey. But then they might come back with, hey, hey, Jason, I've got a different idea. This one's not, wow, it's not so big. We're just going to build a mobile game. It's just like Candy Crush except it's got these different power-ups that I like, and uh, it doesn't have that time lock stuff, so I don't have to buy things on it. And then I go, well, uh, did you look to see if there are other versions like Candy Crush that have that that already exist? The answer, of course, is always like, no, but I thought about it. I'm like, if you didn't think to do it, you didn't go look for them and go grab the hundreds of clones out there, what makes you think that you're going to be able to suddenly sell your clone because you've added in the one feature that's probably already in some other clone that already exists. So again, here, it's really just about educating people and letting them know that an idea that's just a copy of a game with a small little change isn't really that valuable. In fact, again, ideas are not very valuable in general. Ideas without execution have pretty much zero value at all. So if you've just got an idea and you don't have the energy and the will and the driving force to really push it and make it into a thing, and as far as you're going to go is just saying, hey, could you make this thing for me? Then it's never going to happen. So you've got to make sure that they know that if they want to make a thing, they've got to really dive in. They've got to invest. They've got to learn how to do it themselves a bit. They've got to really understand it and go full on that you cannot just build them a game in a week that's a little bit different than Candy Crush and suddenly makes them into a millionaire. Now, sometimes they'll go from there and lead into question number four, or my favorite one, which is, well, how do you learn how to do it? If I wanted to become a developer, like, how would I do that? Is it even possible? Isn't it super hard? Or aren't you like a math wizard? Don't you have to really love math to be a developer or learn this stuff in college or maybe when you start out as a kid? And the answer to that is, of course, obviously a big fat no. If you're a developer already, you know that 
you can learn development a bunch of different ways. Developers come from all different backgrounds. I personally got my degree in electronics, had zero to do with development at all, and learned everything kind of on my own. Now, it mostly came from books and experimentation and reading online documentation once that became available. But 95% of learning how to code or be a developer is really just about actually doing development work, building some stuff, writing code, watching it fail, watching it succeed, and then learning from the process. You're going to learn a lot faster if you're actually building games than if you're just reading about building games. So I highly recommend that they get in, maybe take a course online. They could check out mine or anybody else's. Go through a bunch of free tutorials and start building out some games. Try to make your own games, release them, share them, and they're going to suck at first. Deal with it, accept it, and just know that as you build more and more games, they're going to get better and better. But that's what I would recommend to them. Now, if you get crazy questions all the time too, please let me know what they are. Share them down below. I get quite a few, but I didn't want this video to go on forever. And I also didn't want to out too many people. Sorry, sis. And if you've got uh, other questions or things that you want to share, just drop them in the comment below. Also, please make sure that you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe and hit the alert button and share and all that fun stuff. All right. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for the questions. And again, if you got any for me, drop them down below. Bye. How about a nice game of chess?